Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. The development of my acreage continues as I work to turn bare dirt into a beautifully landscaped yard. All right, well, when we left off in the last episode, I had finished digging holes for all the irrigation valve boxes around the yard, started working on putting some of the valves in those boxes, and then got three quarter inch poly pipe run along all the tree lines around the yard. Once that was done, I used the bobcat to backfill the trench, with the exception of anywhere there were connection points. And since summer was fast approaching and the weeds were growing, I used my new Honda rototiller to take care of all the weeds in the eco buffer. And that's exactly where I'm gonna pick things up. All of those newly planted trees desperately needed water, so it was time to get all the irrigation wire hooked up to my controller, which will allow me to set programs and control everything from my phone. Next, it was time to bite the bullet and actually turn the system on and fill all the lines with water, which I'm happy to report it went very smoothly and all my little trees were finally getting watered with the push of a button. Of course, the weeds were still growing, so once the eco buffer was tilled, it was time to turn my attention to the interior of the yard where the weeds were growing rampant. If you guys recall from an earlier episode, the municipality I'm in actually requires that weeds be kept under a certain height, and these ones were definitely approaching that, so I got to work with my Honda trimmer and whacked them into oblivion. Now you guys will probably notice here that my legs are getting absolutely blasted with bits of weeds. This was a bit of an oversight on my part and a mistake I don't plan on making again because it was not very easy to get that cleaned off. Okay, well with the weeds in the front of the yard taken care of, it was time to turn my attention to the backyard where they were pretty much out of control at this point. To my earlier point, leaving these wasn't an option, but not to mention that some of them were already going to seed like the foxtail, which if any of you have foxtail in your area, you'd know it's an incredibly hard weed to get rid of, and it definitely wins the battle of the weeds, and same with the Canadian thistle. It's extremely persistent. But besides foxtail and thistle, there's a healthy crop of wild buckwheat growing all across the backyard here. So using the weed whacker really wasn't an option. I needed the big guns for this job and that's exactly why I've got Johnny. The tiller on the back won't have any trouble with these weeds.
Now, since this was only my second time tilling such a large area with a tractor, I couldn't help but think there must be some advanced strategies on how to do this efficiently so that I don't have to make such tight turns around the corners and so that I don't have to backtrack on my way out. So if there's anyone out there who might have some farming experience and some helpful tips, well, I'd love to hear them. So if you guys happen to be like me and kind of enjoy watching the tractor just do its thing here, I'd be curious to know how many of you might want to see a full video of something like this on the channel. I did put out a video last year of the Bobcat just moving piles and piles of dirt and did that more of an ASMR style. So if you guys would be interested in seeing videos like that here, maybe in between the full episodes where I update you on progress, then I'd be more than happy to make them for you guys. There's certain things where I end up having tons of footage and just can't use it all for a regular update episode. So putting it out as its own video to help kind of bridge the gap between the bigger episodes could definitely be an option if you guys want. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you want to see. All right, well, after a couple hours of non-stop tilling, here's what the results look like. A pretty big improvement if you ask me, except for that tiny area around the line for the septic field where I didn't want to get too close in case I nicked it. Fast forward to the end of August now, and after a couple of months growing, the eco buffer is looking really good. Honestly, I have to say, I'm surprised by how much everything has grown already, and it gives me hope that this will fill in nicely in just a few short years. Of course, the poplars are leading the way as they've grown nearly three feet already, but really almost everything is looking happy and healthy, even the weeds, which I'm doing my best to control, but with this much tree line, it is a big challenge. Here's a quick look at some of what I've got planted here, including some dogwoods, some purple leaf sand cherry, and spirea, and a couple of ash trees. Now, as we move to the back tree line, this is where the weeds are still out of control. The wild buckwheat has taken over along with a bunch of Canadian thistle and a host of other weeds. But despite all that, the spruce trees are still doing well, except for this guy. No clue what happened to him. Probably got stepped on if I had to guess though. Then my Saskatoon berry bushes are coming in nicely. And on a completely unrelated note, while I was back here, I happened to spot the badger that lives in the pasture just behind my yard. Now this was the first time I'd actually seen him, so that was kind of cool to catch him. Continuing along, and the nursery of spruce and pine trees looks pretty good too. And then there's a couple of volunteer poplars from the neighbor's yard that I'm not sure yet if I'll let live. Then my lilac row is looking really healthy too. And I've got a nice crop of corn coming and a few pumpkins too. Moving along to September, and I was busy prepping my house in the city to sell, which meant my hot tub had to get craned over the house because there was no way I was giving anyone the option of asking for it in their offer. So a few hundred bucks later, and what I would say is a somewhat sketchy move since those straps were so close together, and we were able to get it onto my quad trailer, though I did need to use a couple of pallets to get it up over the rails. Then after a very slow drive out to the acreage, and with some help from Bobby, I had it positioned at least for the winter. But speaking of winter, I had a couple things to get done before the snow flies, including a quick grade around the house and some work on the lane, as I still want to build it up a little bit higher, 
Now, while I didn't film any of that work as I was under a time crunch, it did happen and now I'm in a good spot for the spring melt. Now, members of the main channel might remember that right around this time, I went on a long road trip down to Arizona and even managed to sneak in some side by siding around the desert. Here's a quick peek at what that looked like. Well, shortly after I got back, winter had officially arrived and it was time to put Johnny to work with his big snow bucket pushing all the snow off the reclaim. I built the snow bucket last winter shortly after I got the tractor, but I only use it a couple of times, though I can say it does work really well. Now of course, since mother nature is cruel, we got even more snow overnight, so I was back out the next morning taking care of a couple of snow drifts around the yard, and while you might think this is a bunch of work, it's honestly not. I really enjoy pushing snow, and really anything I get to do in the tractor, or the bobcat for that matter. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I'll even mount my phone inside the cab and watch something on TV or a YouTube video or something. All right guys, well that is where I'm gonna end things for this episode. Once the irrigation project was taken care of, there really wasn't anything too pressing to do out in the yard, at least until next spring, which is exactly where next episode is gonna start. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, and if you did, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.